Happy Sabbath, Church. Today's scripture reading is found in Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 3. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Thank you, Matthew. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, church. God is good. And all the time. This morning, I'd like to welcome you all in the name of the, our Lord Jesus Christ. Do we have any visitors with us here visiting us? Any visitors vis visiting us today? I thought I saw some new faces. We have um, my brother from the back there. We used to worship together. And uh, it's good that you have visited us, uh, Brother Samuel. Good to see you. This morning, I would like also to welcome those of us who are listening via our local radio channel 87.6, which is around the Armadale and Gosnells area. would like to welcome you. We also have those who are watching us via YouTube. From wherever, wherever you are, I know we have family back in Geraldton and uh, over in the Philippines and some in Zimbabwe which are joining us would like to welcome you and we also want to welcome anyone who will be watching us from the four corners of the world this morning i believe god will bless you so as i was thinking what shall i talk about you know my thought rushed back to the time you know, at the end of the year, we count those final minutes and we say Happy New Year to one another. I remember I sent a message to one of my friends who is back in Zimbabwe. He is one of the, he is one of the pastors from uh, one of the Pentecostal churches in Zimbabwe. So I sent him this message, Happy New Year, brother. So we started talking. So as we carried on, this was on New Year's, I asked him, what is the plan, brother? What are you doing? He replied to me, he said, my brother, don't you know we have already started our 10 days of prayer? You know, that sort of challenged me. And uh, I believe many of us, we know this, I think it's from the 6th to the 16th, which is ending today. We have been on these 10 days of prayer. So I would like to ask each one of you, how many of you perhaps dedicated this time, either you as an individual with your God or as a group, just to pray? You know, we know this pandemic is causing a lot of trouble, chaos everywhere. Are we spending any time in prayer with our God? So you know, brothers and sisters, what am I saying to you this morning? What I'm saying is, if ever there was a time, if ever there was a time when you and I ought to be united together in prayer, if ever there was a time when you and I us to pray that time is now so this morning I thought our sermon our sermon will be evolving around the subject of prayer so if I can ask hands up those who have prayed for whatever that you have prayed for and that prayer has been answered anyone God bless you. Amen. It's good to see prayers have been answered. How about 
Some of us who have heard prayers, we have prayed, but our prayers have not been answered. We have prayed, but we are still waiting and we are still praying. Any of us? I am one of them. So, this morning I'm going to take you on a journey. We are going to explore some of the aspects which will enlighten us perhaps why our prayers have been answered. So you and I will be able to see why some of our prayers have not been answered or why the, we are still praying and we are still waiting. So let us spend time in prayer before we begin. Father in heaven, we humbly come before your throne of mercy. Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity that we can come. Father, I ask, please hide me behind the cross. I am nothing but an empty vessel. Father, fill me with your truth. Give me the words to say to your children, so that when all is said and done, glory and honor will be returned to you alone. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So are we all together, church? Yes. Amen. Amen. So, what is prayer? I've been thinking. Prayer is that time where we can communicate with our God. Prayer is that spiritual communication between man and God. This is the time when I can talk to my God at an intimate level. You know, I was thinking, when we pray, I would uh, liken it to me, myself, talking to my little boy, Andrew. Him talking, having a conversation. Perhaps he may ask me what he wants daddy to do for him. Perhaps I can tell him what I want him to do for me. So, these aspects which we are going to explore together. The first one. Let us pray with the knowledge that we are walking in the will of God. You know, I've been thinking, and uh, as you know, this pandemic, it's, uh, we have had a lot of people, especially from my country. From work, we talk, and someone telling me, I lost a relative, I lost a relative, I have so and so who is sick. These are trying times, and these are times where we need to be prayerful. So point number one I have here, pray with the knowledge that you are walking in the will of God. So what am I saying? A person who willfully, who knows he is living in that life of disobedience, you cannot expect to have your prayers answered. Why? Because when that prayer is answered, it's spiritual power. Go with me to Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. So I am saying, a person who knowingly and willingly lives a life, a life of disobedience cannot expect to have his or her prayers answered. So Colossians here is saying, for this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, wisdom and spiritual understanding. So what I want from this verse is, from the knowledge of his will, all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being faithful in every good work and increasing in knowledge of God. So what am I saying, church? Is it God's will that you are doing those things which you do in darkness, when you are all alone? Is it God's will that you go around and gossip about others? Is it God's will that you still is it God's will that you do all those things you are doing? 
So let us pray with the knowledge that we are walking in the will of God, church. Don't quote me wrong. Our God is a loving God. He would love to bless each and every one of us. He would love to have all our prayers answered. But his blessing cannot be used as an endorsement to that disobedient life. Our second point which we have here together, church, let us pray in the name of Jesus. Are we together, church? Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Why do we pray in the name of Jesus? You know, there was a conversation which uh, I saw on the internet, uh, that was on Facebook. What does it mean to pray in the name of Jesus? Well, in the Bible, if we go to John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, I'll give you time to look it up. John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. Are we together? The Bible says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And verse 14, here it goes. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So here we are. We pray in Jesus' name. But let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. Praying in the name of Jesus is more than just using those names, Jesus. You know, I remember back home in Zimbabwe, people believe that when you say anything in the name of Jesus, something magical will happen. When you pray in that name of Jesus, something magical will happen. So praying in the name of Jesus is more than just using those words. When I pray in the name of Jesus, I must, I must, I must pray in the knowledge that Jesus hates sin. When I pray in the name of Jesus, I must pray in the conscious, with the conscious mind of Jesus. So when you and I say in Jesus' name, when you and I say we pray in Jesus' name, we must pray knowing Jesus' character. We must pray saying, Jesus, your character is what I desire. So I hope we are together. So point number one, what did we have? Pray in the knowledge that you are walking in the will of God. Number two, let us pray in Jesus' name. So let us go back to that will of God. Our next point here, let us pray according to his will. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Let us go to First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. The Bible says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we have asked of him. The Bible is making it clear for us, church, that if you and I ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. So I ask a question. Do we all know God's will? Yes, no. But we know some of it. So I ask, is it God's will that you can minister to those around you? Is it God's will that you can attend prayer meeting every Wednesday? The problem with us, um, we, we skip the very obvious reasons which we know this is God's will and we move on to that unknown boundary.
So, what am I saying? When was the last time you said, Lord, please help me that I might rearrange my schedule, that I may have time to, to, to spend with you, time to pray, time to minister to those around us, time to spread your word so that you can be known to those who have not known you. You know, some of us, or I can say most of us, we are self-centered. We only consider ourselves. We are asking for things for ourselves alone. But what am I saying this morning? When you and I ask things, when we ask according to Jesus' will, according to God's will, there are some other things which he will just give us because we would have asked the right things. You know, we all know why is King Solomon. He asked God, please God give me, all I ask is wisdom and knowledge. We can look it up, it's in the Bible. What did God do? God gave him that wisdom and knowledge and because he only asked that, he gave him riches, wealth, and honor. So we are talking about praying according to his will. So I ask you church this morning, is it God's will that you forgive that brother or that sister which perhaps you have not forgiven? For quite some time. Is it God's will that we can forgive one another? Yes. yes. Let us go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Reading from verse 10. Reading verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. So I ask this question, how do you and I know that we are praying in God's will? How do we know that we are praying in God's will? So the Bible here it says, but God revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So the spirit knows everything about God. And when the spirit dwells in you and I, he prompts our heart about what to pray for and what not to pray for. The Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you and I into all what? Truth. Christ said, if you abide in me and my ways abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and, I'll, and it will be done for you. This is in John chapter 15, verse 7. Thy word is truth. And here, Christ is saying, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So how do you and I abide in Christ? John chapter 8, verse 31, it says, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Some of us, perhaps, the only time which we open our Bibles is when we come to church on Sabbath morning, when we are having a lesson. And here, Christ is saying, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Let us continue on with our subject. Let us pray with the knowledge that we are walking in the will of God. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Let us pray according to his will. Our next point which we have here this morning. Do not regard iniquity in your heart. Psalm 66 verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. 
the Bible says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. I think we are together, church. So one might ask, what is it that you are talking about? What is regarding iniquity in your heart? You know, many of us who have these sins which we cherish over and over. We enjoy committing those sins. And here the Bible is saying, if I regard iniquity, the Lord will not hear. What else could that mean? You know, I have heard people who say, oh, okay, even we used to do that. Someone we have noticed, noticed someone is stealing, perhaps at school back in the day. Someone has stolen someone's, someone's pen or whatever that is. We say, no, I, I don't steal. Me, I'm not a thief, I don't steal. But uh, if you are stealing, it's okay. I don't know if you are together here. What I'm saying is you and I must hate the fact that sin is being committed. You know, there are some Christians who regard, who regard iniquity not because they directly commit the sin, but because they are not opposed to it. You know, as I was contemplating, I was thinking, perhaps I am one of them. I need to repent of this. So I ask you this morning, church, is there a sin that you and I regard in our hearts? If there is, it blocks the answers to our prayers. You and I will not have our prayers answered because it was iniquity which caused Jesus to, to die on the cross. And it is only Jesus who is our medium between us and God, isn't it? So, let us pray with the knowledge that we are walking in the will of God. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Let us pray according to his will. And... Let us not regard iniquity in our hearts. Our next point which we have here this morning, church. Let us not turn our ears from the law. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. The Bible says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. You know, turning that blind eye. You know the law says, thou shalt not do this and that. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So the one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 4. The prayer says, the, the Bible here says, And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside into what? Into fables. So when you and I turn our ears away from the law, we are turned into something else, isn't it? We don't have a middle ground here. And Jesus, I'll continue on. There is another verse here. I'll quickly say it's in Mark chapter 7, verse 9. Jesus said, All too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. You know, some of us who have traditions, I know back in my country, sometimes we choose to, 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 to stick to those traditions while abolishing the law of God. 
Sometimes we choose to turn our ear from the law of God because it does not please us. So, brothers and sisters, it's an abomination before God if you and I do that. So the Bible says, if you know the truth and do not do it, it would actually have been better not to have known that truth than to know that I am not, I'm supposed to do this and then I turn a blind eye. So what aspect of God's will are we turning our ears from? Perhaps because they don't suit us. Is there some areas in your life which you know you are fighting God? So I ask, are there areas in your life which you know we are fighting? We know this is the truth, but we are fighting God. Church, I'm saying to you, the time is now. Let us turn away from our evil doings so that God can hear us. Our next point which we have here. When you and I pray, let us not give up to Israel. You know, years ago, I, um, a few years ago, we had a preacher who came to Geraldton. He came, he told his testimony how he used to be a member of a bike gang and how his mom never gave up on him. How his mom prayed for him all these years until he was 31 years old. When his mom's prayer was answered. So this morning I would like to encourage you, brothers and sisters, let us not give up easily. So our next point here, let us pray in the spirit. You and I need to acknowledge the role of the spirit. When we pray to God in the name of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, God will hear us. So when we pray, we should acknowledge the role of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The spirit works upon our hearts, drawing our prayers and pe penitence, praise, and thanksgiving. The gratitude which flows from our lips is the result of the Spirit striking the chords of the soul in the holy memories, awakening the music of the heart. This is from um, E.G. White, SGA Bible Commentary, Volume 6, uh, page 1077. So if we go to Romans, Romans chapter 8, Paul writes, Romans, the Bible says, and take the helmet, Romans chapter 8, verse 6, likewise the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know what we pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And then in Ephesians 6, 17, the Bible says, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. You know, when Jesus came here on this earth, before he departed, he gave us the gift of his spirit, the Holy Spirit. We all know what happened at Pentecost when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. We all know after Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, he preached. I think it's like 3,000 people. They repented. So I ask you this, quest, this morning, church, are you and I filled with the same spirit which the early church had? So our next point, let us pray biblically. What do I mean when I say let us pray biblically? 
you know you are that child of God who has been returning the tithes and offerings. And now you are in a financial distress situation. You can come to God. You said, Father, you said it in your word. Bring all the tithes and offerings. And I will pour so much blessing. So please help me. Let us claim these promises. You and I need to claim these promises in God's way. So prayer is the breath of the soul. It brings angels to our side. When we pray, we are drawn much closer to God. You know, sometimes we may feel we have no hope. We have these questions which we have in life. There is so much chaos going on in this world. But when we are connected with our God in prayer, we have this hope, we have this peace. So if I may ask, how many times do you and I pray? Do you only pray when you eat? You know, the frequency at which you and I pray would determine our relationship with our God. It would determine how far or how closer we are to our God. So church, I'm saying, Jesus came, he led by example. Before he started his work, what did he do? He spent some time to pray. He prayed. How about us? Before we go about the business of our our daily business, do we put God first? So as we come to the end of the sermon, I'm saying, brothers and sisters, you look north, you look east, south, west, wherever that is. I can say without a doubt, many people, many lives have been lost due to this COVID-19. Not only from COVID alone, there are lots of pestilences out there. I'm talking about sickness. It could not only be sickness. Perhaps some of us, we are looking for jobs. Some of us, we have been laid off at work. Some of us, we have broken families, financial distress, you name it. This afternoon I'm saying, there is a God who answers prayer. There is a God who delights in looking after that which is His. So this morning I am, I am saying to you, brothers and sisters, let us try Jesus. All you and I need to do is to turn from our wicked ways. So let us present ourselves as living sacrifices. I hope we can find courage knowing there is a God who forgives. We have a God who loves us, who delights in looking after us. So when we come to him earnestly in prayer, he will look down and say, this little child of mine, he surely knows where his bread is buttered. He will surely answer our prayers. Jeremiah 33 verse, 30, verse 3, the Bible says, call to me and I will answer you and show you the great and mighty things which you do not know. Pray in the knowledge that you are walking in the will of God. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray according to his will. Do not regard iniquity in your heart. Turn your ears, let us not turn our ears from the law of God, but rather we turn our ears to the law. To a point where you and I can say, I delight to do thy will, thy will. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Let us not give up too easily. Let us pray in the spirit. Let's pray biblically. So brothers and sisters, I am saying to you this morning, let us get sin out of our lives. And when we do that, 
will be more connected to our God. May God bless you.